Hey y'all, it's Amelia Rose, and welcome to Say La Me, and welcome to Counting Time Till 1989, Taylor's version. Uh, we do not have to count time, really, at all, anymore. Uh, the album is almost out. I am actually waiting. It's about 19 minutes until the album releases. I am in my car, as usual. If you are just now joining me, if you're, like, joining me from the podcast project or something, I will do album review episodes for Taylor Swift albums. I always do them in my car because I live with my family. (laughs) So, it's actually kind of become a really fun tradition. Um, I don't know. It's just kind of, there's something neat about recording in your car and just being like, okay, like, that means we're doing another album review but I'm so excited for this album I cannot wait I am just over the moon about this album coming out it's so fun so uh just it's such its own album and I'm actually around the age that Taylor was when she put the album together which is very very special for me because I find this album so much more relatable than I found it at you know, how old was I? I think I was 15. I think I just turned 15. Um, and at 24, I'm like, oh, wow, these songs really hit hard. Like I, you know, it's crazy. And so I'm in my car. I got my chai sugar cookies. I made two of them for myself, uh, with gluten-free flour, which is very exciting, uh, for me. (laughs) And then I have a vodka diet Coke also, because why not? And I'm just really ready for this album. I'm very excited to, very fun things, or several fun things happened today. Um, the first being, I actually was in a collage, like in 1989, they did that, like, 1989 cover collage thing, and I was in one that Rachel, um, on Twitter did. I think it's Happiness for TS, but she's usually Happiness for Swift on, like, other social media platforms. Really fun, positive person, and so she was like, oh, reply with your images, whatever, to, be a part of this and so I responded with the two images that I had run through that little like generator thing and one was me in my podcast merch so it's like the sweatshirt that says say la me which is available for purchase if anyone's interested um that's linked down below but anyway or that's on my website the shop button but anyway um so that was one picture and then another one was me in Nashville just like hanging out chilling drinking an espresso martini and so She put both of those in the collage, which was very sweet of her, and Taylor Nation reposted that collage, and so not only am I on there, and it's like, oh, it's Amelia Rose's version of 1989, like, very cool, um, like, granted, I am, like, a tiny face on there, but still, my face is on there, it's on there twice, and I'm wearing podcast merch, like, literally, it's very visible podcast merch, and I'm like, oh, that is crazy. So that was very exciting today. Something else that's cool is I'm going to speak at an event at my university, my alma mater. Um, It's a Taylor Swift event and they invited me to speak. (laughs) So that's really fun. And then Saturday night, I am going to be watching the Aerostore movie. So it's a very Taylor Swift week. But if you are joining me from Counting Time till 1989, if you've seen this podcast because of the project and all of that. Thank you so much for listening. Thank you for listening to any or all of the episodes that you listen to for this project. I've had such a fun time. I really like, I don't know if they're listening, but I really want to thank Alexis and Sophia and Allie and Alana for coming on because they were just like, I love that lineup. Um, they were amazing and I loved every single episode. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for joining me back for this episode. And I do want to say before we get started, before 1989 releases and it's just this crazy fun time. Um, if you enjoy the podcast, please leave me a review, uh, a rating on Spotify, Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe or share with a friend, share on social media. If you would share this episode on social media, I would be so grateful. I really love my album reviews. I take a lot of pride in them. So yeah, that would be very fun of you if you did that. So yeah, I'm just going to chill, relax, maybe eat a chai cookie and wait till this album drops and then we will start with the first track yay okay the album's out i just listened to welcome to new york first track welcome to new york oh my gosh i'm so excited what the heck Ah! okay this the claps are crisp okay 
they sound so good the sparkly shiny bits like burr, 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 burr. i can't even do it i'm I, i'm off tune i'm so excited um you know the shiny bits the sparkly fun like kind of glowy sounds that i'm talking about they're so pretty i actually just tweeted like oh my gosh i'm gonna lose it when i heard them and i was right i like oh my gosh those are so pretty they are so pretty um this is such a good opener i am just so excited like re-excited about this opener i'm just like what the heck how did she do this and i'm really glad that she has that sass i'm just like i know what i'm doing and it is cool as hell like i love love that and so it's crazy um the anything 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 part ah uh, she sounds so good. It sounds like she's still in love with New York. And then the welcome to New York. Like, just restarting. It's so fun. I could not help myself at the end. I really try not to sing along to these songs when I'm listening to them. Because I'm like, oh, what if there's, like, an inflection that I'm missing? Or, you know, something that I sing over. But I just could not help myself the last chorus. I was just like, welcome to New York. You know, I'm, like, in Mobile, Alabama. But I'm, like, screaming, welcome to New York. It, alone in my car with everything. It's fine. Um yeah this is <laughs> this is such a good song i'm so excited and then blank space is next okay i'm gonna listen to that and get back with y'all all right the next track on the track list is of course blank space oh my goodness again this sounds so crisp i don't know why that's the word that i'm using to describe this but it sounds so hd so like awesome just very cool uh the way she said things and mistakes sounded a little different almost like she had a little twang like i can show you incredible things and uh, like that was a little bit you know exaggerated but it kind of i felt kind of a twang in there so maybe and the little laugh with um the a was cute super super cute and then the, i can make the bad guys good for a weekend also the darling i'm a nightmare dressed like a daydream like all of that was so so cute and like really well stated and just sounded like a little sassy again i loved it um and then the pin click i loved it's so fun and then the i can make all the tables turn that whole verse the screaming crying perfect stars like all of that that sounded angrier it sounded angrier than the original, which I loved. Um, and yeah, and then the boys only want love if it's torture. That part, just very clear, very like decisive. This is like all the emotions of the song are heightened with this re recording. I love this so much. All right, track three on 1989 Taylor's version is Style. Okay, the opening riff never gets old, so classic, never gets out of style, never goes out of style. Oh my goodness, I love that riff. It just, it makes you feel very, like, you're in the mood. You're just like, oh my gosh, we're, like, driving down a highway at night and, like, next to somebody. Honestly, it's very sexy. And her vocals in the song, again, love, 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 love. So fun. The fade into view holdout note, like, where she held out view. I was like, wait, she's still singing. That's cool. Um, and the chorus sounds a little more staccato with the vocals. It, it really kind of is giving me vibes of, like, 1989 World Tour. Like, live vocals, which I really enjoy. I think it sounds great. Um, and then Take Me Home, obviously. That's highlight of the song. Uh, what are the fun little magic notes in the background of the chorus that I've never noticed? I think they amplified them in this re-recording because I just noticed this little shimmery bit in the background and I'm like, oh, <laughs> wait, I, I don't remember this that well. Like, that's crazy. And so I, that was probably a highlight for me because I was like, wait, what are these little fun little shimmer things? So very fun song. Alrighty, track four is Out of the Woods. It always so enjoyable i love that song so powerful um the background opening vocals and the little vibrating note that i've really never noticed um it was it didn't sound like a glitch but it sounded like a little i don't know all i can describe it as is vibrations or something um either that's new or i've really never noticed it and they pulled it forward in these re-recordings that is what i love about these re-recordings they can pull things forward and really emphasize them and i'm like oh wait I feel like I, I logged that in my mind, but really never noticed it, and it's kind of them being like, take note of this, you know? And so I love that part. Um, I love the echoey vocals in this one. I feel like they really shone, shone through, they shined through. I don't know, but uh, drums, as always, gorgeous, love them. Very, 
very like I don't know just very hard hitting and just repetitive and very like anxiety inducing almost but like so fun in the song the I remember thinking I love that part always love that part and then this part it's like even better because her vocals are like oh it's like so good the bridge is always just so powerful to think that Taylor has probably gone through so much more anxiety since she originally recorded the song is just like oh my gosh when you think about that you're like wow this song is probably like she's able to really sing it with like a true I guess understanding of what that anxiety has felt like for the past however many years you know that's just crazy to think about and then the background vocals in the bridge are my absolute favorite I love them so much it's like I love them and I really like the part I always sing this part where it's like are we out of the woods yet are we out of the woods yet are we out of the woods yet are we out of the woods you know it's um I'm sorry excuse my bad singing but I don't know how else to explain it to you besides singing it and you know I just don't know but I always love that part where it's kind of descending and it's at the very end and I was so hoping that that would be there, and it was, and it was great, because that's just something that I always look forward to during the song, just singing that part um, better than I just sang it on the podcast for the whole world to hear, but yeah, yeah, every, all of the fun elements that I love about the song is there, and then there are even more elements that I'm noticing now that I'm like, wait a sec, that's really fun, so 10 out of 10, love, love this version. All right, the danciest track five we have ever gotten from a Taylor Swift thing is amazing um is all you had to do was say I was so excited to hear this song and it completely is just like blew my expectations out of the water so exciting again like I said like my favorite elements are there and then more elements are there like the little squeaky part in less I know was so cool I feel like she, I'm not going to imitate it I'm sorry guys (laughs) I'm not going to imitate it um but the squeaky part in less I know super cute, super, super, like, I don't know, just fun, and then I was so excited about the stay, the really high-pitched stay, because I was like, okay, they sounded great in the original version, they're gonna sound even better in this one, and it was, and it was so clear, and so nice, and so just, like, piercing, honestly, because I am going to say I like relate to the song so hard because I feel like a lot of the times when I have like a relationship go south or whatever it was because um like the other person just didn't like stay like I I mean now this is my biased opinion obviously there are two sides to every story but at the same time I feel like I'm really typically maybe not always but typically willing to stay for people if they are willing to stay for me. And so sometimes they don't stay for me. And then as a 15 year old, I'm like, you know, have not not been through heartbreak, but I'm still like, you know, this feels familiar with friendships and stuff. It's just like, I would have said, like, I would have stayed for you, but all you had to do was stay for me and you didn't, you ended it. What the heck, you know? And so as much as this is a dancey song, it's probably the most like high, like I said, the the most high energy track five we'll ever get. Um, it's so deep and full of meaning and so like relatable for me and so many other people. It's just it it really is just like have me in the palm of your hand, why do you have to let me out lock me out when I let you in? Like, seriously. Why did I put in all this effort to get to know you, to be your friend, to be whatever, and then for you just to be like, yeah, no, not really feeling it, bye, and you're like, what the heck, seriously, so, yeah, I totally get the song, I love the song, the high-pitched day is going to be in my dreams tonight, and that is fine with me, all right, you know, if people don't stay for you, guess what you have to do, you have to shake it off, all right, yeah, that is track six, that was a very, very cringy segue into this, it doesn't matter, this is more fun than the original, I'm just gonna say it, this is so fun, I love this one, the monologue, like, oh my gosh, she's just like, hey, 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 <laughs> like, I feel like in the other one, she was like, hey, 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 and then this one, she's like, hey, 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 like, you know who I am, like, let's just get that out of the way, and the laughing, right before, like, in the second chorus, like, 
right before she was like, hey, 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 like all of that. What was that? I love that. It was wild. It was crazy. It was fun. It sounded like she was having a ton of fun in uh, the recording studio. <laughs> this is so fun. And I will admit, I sang a lot to this. So I probably don't, I didn't pick up on like all the whatever, but it's shake it off. Okay. I am in my little car. Like literally I own a Fiat 500. And if, if you don't know what that is, look it up. It's tiny. And I'm like bouncing up and down, excited about everything. Like, I got to dance to shake it off. I'm sorry. That's the only time that I regret during this whole re-recording process, album review stuff, that I regret not being like in a house <laughs> or a room where I could get up. Sometimes I do regret that it's like not air conditioned in here because, yeah but that's a different topic. I love this. I loved this song. Oh my gosh, it takes me back to just like hearing it in the mall or on the radio and being so excited and really kind of feeling like I still feel like this. I really do. And I know that Taylor is not my underground indie artist that nobody else knows, but I will say I, um, (laughs) I always feel like when Taylor comes on the radio, I'm like, wait, that's Taylor. That's Taylor. Oh my gosh, it's Taylor. They're playing Taylor Swift, you know? And I always get excited. Like, she's literally the most famous, probably, person in the planet right now. And I still get that, like, wait, that's Taylor. That's my artist. That's the one I like. That's that's her. That's her. That she's on the radio. I, I always feel like that. But I don't feel like that all the time, like, listening back to songs and it's just me but shake it off I remember hearing that all the time on the radio in the mall like whatever and I remember just being like that is her that's my artist that is my girl I love it and I always just felt so special like the radio gods were choosing to make me happy in that moment by playing shake it off um so yes this song brought back a lot of feelings that I didn't realize I had a lot of memories that I just unlocked right now and it's so much fun and oh my gosh I have such a new appreciation for this song and I will be playing it on the way to work tomorrow I am going to have to shake off the tiredness the sleepiness whatever I am so excited to listen to this blessing in the car radio I don't care who who wants to I don't know who who's mad at me no one's gonna be mad at me because it's shake it off Alright, track seven is I Wish You Would, and I did not think I was going to cry to this record, but here I am, as is tradition in Taylor Swift, re-recording uh, podcast album reviews, uh, whatever you want to say, that was just a jumble of words, but um, yeah, I typically cry, but 1989 is a pretty, I mean, it's a deep record, it is, but like the popness of it just makes me very excited, so I didn't really expect to cry, but here I am, I wish you would. Oh my gosh, like, uh, just let's talk about how it sounds. Um, how does Taylor sound so effortlessly cool in this track? Like, with the melody and all the instrumentation and everything and her vocals and everything. When this song is all about effort and inner thoughts. You know, I really loved her vibrato, her shaky voice kind of thing in the song. Um, don't know how to quite describe it, but just like, I guess it sounded very vulnerable, authentic, not too too polished and that was really nice so the reason why I was crying during the song is (laughs) because I feel like it kind of hit me of how much I related to it and how much I just like have spent time especially like I don't know when I was younger just wishing that things were different than how they were and how just like all these different scenarios of me just like looking and being like oh I wish this happened or I wish this had happened or I wish I wish I wish I wish and that whole part where she's like I wish I wish I that part just like is like that's that was my mind for so long of just like well I wish everything was different I wish you know this person had stayed or I wish that I had a chance to tell this person how I felt or I wish this person had been into me or you know I wish I had this opportunity or whatever and it's just kind of like sad to think about that we wish different things would happen or didn't happen or whatever we just spend our time wishing and I don't know if that's really even what she wanted me to get out of that song but that's what I got out of it it's just like god just like I wish I wish I wish it's just so um I don't know it just hit me in a different way of just being like wow okay you you just keep wishing that 
this happened and you know how many times have I said to myself well I wish he would have done this or I wish this would have happened or you know I just wish he likes me or I just wish she put in effort or I wish my phone would light up with a text from someone you know and so it's kind of like when in your loneliest like places in life when you just keep wishing and for a while I did that and sometimes I still do I'm actually decently confident right now and I'm not just saying that because I have a mic in front of my face I'm saying that because it's true I really don't feel like I have any of those like not that they were ever major but they felt major at the time I really felt like I had you know different things in my life like that felt like periods of turmoil kind of especially as like a teenager or whatever um that's just hard for everybody but it just to me and I'm sure to a lot of other people like uh teenagerhood or whatever felt like just a tumultuous time and so but just like looking back I'm just like wow how many times have I wished things were different or I wish so-and-so would do something or I wish I had done something different or I wish I could just talk to someone, you know? And so, yeah, it just really hit me hard. It hit me very differently than it ever has, honestly. And, like, however many years of the song being out, it took a Taylor's version for me to be like, oh, my gosh. And also, seven is my lucky number. So I'm kind of, like, thinking this track has way more meaning to me now and is going to be, like, one of the tracks, like, I'm gonna come away from this album being like, okay, yeah, this song that, you know, kind of stuck out to me, but was never really my favorite, it's now in my top three, you know, (laughs) so, yeah, Taylor, by releasing your own music, and being able to own your work, you have made my rankings change, (laughs) all right, track eight, which I full-on sang to, is Bad Blood, (laughs) you can't not sing to Bad Blood, like, oh my gosh, I really love the echoes, of like the first I mean all the vocals but the first um like opening like vocals I loved the echoes it sounded very like I don't know it just interplayed really well sonically just sounded so so good and the hey like was so like she mustered all the anger she had (laughs) in her and was just like I'm gonna go full force with this her deep range it sounds so good, it sounds so angry, it sounds so polished and really good, like, I don't know what to say about it, but, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's crazy, I love this song, and I did, did just sing to this song, like, oh my gosh, this is such a good song to just be like, you know, like, this person made me mad, like, bad blood, you know, and just, it's so catchy, and the drums, oh my gosh, like, that beat is my favorite, Oh my gosh, I, I've i always loved the drums. I just think that they sound so good. They always just sound like, I don't know, very catchy. Very catchy, and I love, I just really love this song. So, yep. Yeah, very happy. <laughs> Alright, the next song, and this has been out for a little bit, is Wildest Dreams. And, oh my gosh, this song almost made me cry. Because I feel like this song has been kind of my, one of my top ones from um, 1989 for a while except for when um <laughs> um when it came out when I was 15 I was like oh my gosh she says you know that part about um being tangled up with somebody all night and um heaven can't help me now and I'm like wait <laughs> what are you doing <laughs> like good catholic girl being like what is happening and so I just remember being like slightly scandalized but also very intrigued by that song when I was younger and it just has grown to be you know something just really kind of pure I guess in my mind of how I associate it with like okay I miss somebody so much but I just want them to remember me in a good light you know and like like, if you think about me, think about it, me well, and, you know, just, you can delete yourself into thinking that we're, we'll see each other again, but if, um, this doesn't last, I just, I don't want you to have this horrible idea of me, I just want, like, you're so dreamy, and we had such, you know, a good relationship, whatever, just remember me well, um, and, you know, d- don't actually say goodbye. Just keep thinking that you're going to see me again. And so I feel like it's a very sweet song. It's a very, like, you know, sensual song, but it's very just, like, 
kind of pure in its meaning. And so it's very dreamy, really, really sweet. And I just, I love this song. It's so dreamy and it's so fun. Okay, track 10, How You Get the Girl. Oh my gosh, I love this song. This is one of my favorites and has been for a while from um, 1989. It's just, it's, it has been my favorite for a while not maybe not my top fave i really don't know what my album ranking is for 1989 but i have always had a fondness for this song and the echoes and the isolation of the opening vocals just oh my gosh it gets me every time it's so so nice and so simple but strong but like it just hits you and you're like wait wait what you gonna say you know and so yeah again this song is relatable yeah, just like men apologize, you know. Um, not for everything. I'm not trying to be a man hater. I'm not a man hater, but you know, I'm just you know, if you did something wrong, just here's how you apologize. It's a very nice guide. Um, the bass almost sounds a little dirtier and grungier is something that I noticed. Um, or at least I noticed it. I don't know if it, that's an element they pulled forward or if I'm just really listening so that I have like thoughts about different aspects of the song I'm not sure but um yeah this song is a total party banger hit song like just total like you could be dancing with confetti and like everything it could be amazing I love the acoustic guitar and the bridge because this is my thought it's a great break from the full-on pop production magic and it makes the song and the lyrics that she's saying like say you want me and like and that kind of like fades in the pop production fades or it comes back in but um tell me how it used to be or remember how it used to be um with the acoustic guitar because it makes it seem more genuine and stripped down to really show the meaning behind her lyrics of just like this is really what I want and then it's like I'm gonna scream it at you one more time with full-on production like I want you you know <laughs> so I, I just really like that I love that about Taylor's music because I can always I can always read new meaning into things that don't have meaning but for Taylor I know it does and so it makes me feel more confident in being like hey so this decision for this instrument or this production or whatever makes this lyric feel more like felt in the song and so I feel like I can say things like that and maybe they're true because I know with Taylor she really does listen to um like she she makes decisions like that she's very detail oriented and it's so fun for me because I am kind of a music geek I always like to just like um insert meaning into things even if it's not there I'm like well you know if I I even have like beef sometimes with certain songs because I'm like well they should have said this or they should have just one lyric tweak would have made the song just completely like 10 times heavier hitting and like people would have you know it would have broke more records or something and so I really do pay attention to music like that and so I think that's why I like Taylor's music so much is because I can really tell what creative decisions she's make and I get it you know, I like totally understand where she's coming from. And to me, that just feels like if we knew each other in person that we would be friends. Okay. That's just, that's all I'm saying. All right. Track 11 is this love. And I love the way this comes in. Um, it's, I mean, it's been out for a while, but I love the order of it on the track list. It's because how you get the girl is really like, so like full production pop production and this is so flowy and gentle and really like you're by a lakeside and you know you're just kind of like waiting for your love to come back to you like basically and I really do relate to the song because it's like I had to let it go and just have faith that something was either going to happen and it was meant to be or if nothing happened it was not meant to be but I had to let I could not keep hoping for you to come I couldn't keep fighting for you whatever I just really had to let it go and then oh my gosh it came back like how crazy and you know I've used this song as like a basis for hope of just like okay I'm letting letting this guy go but he could come back to me you know and he never does so it's okay it's fine um <laughs> and then you let it go and you're like it's fine it's okay and so but I, I really do love this song I love how it started out as a poem and she was able to turn it into like lyrics and get some really good production on it and really good melody and all that it sounds just just a gorgeous song like it's so flowy so dreamy so wistful just really like introspective but also just like like it, our love is alive back from the dead like 
this love came back to me. I don't know. That that's that's a little bit magical to me. So I really like magical songs. All right, track 12, I Know Places. Um, the opening vocals have always been iconic, and I love how they're a little more distorted to really kind of drive home that, like, you push play and it's, like, this record or this, like, tape-recorded something. I really like that. I thought that, that was super fun and really smart. At least that's, like, that's what I'm assuming. That That's, you know, whatever. I love being able to interpret artistic decisions the way that I want them to be interpreted <laughs> on my own podcast, but I really like this song. It's so fun. And, again, crazy to relate it to Taylor's life now. She's even more insanely famous than she ever like was um at that time which is crazy to think about but also you know she went through a period of trying like very intentionally to try and get like have this feeling not be a thing and to be private and all that and so it's it really is very neat how it's all coming coming together and she has this like I wrote these words and now I feel them probably even more so that is really really neat um I loved the obviously the bridge where it's really just the drums and it's just her going full out like baby um and yeah I'm sure you're done hearing me imitate you know the vocals <laughs> but I really really like that part and I it's just it's such a fun song just I I don't know how to say things without imitating the vocals because I really want to it's super fun it's such a good song and you kind of feel like I mean, it's kind of interesting because this is very much like I'm a famous person and this is my struggle as a famous person. But at the same time, she takes that, which is so like not relatable to most of the human population, and she brings it down to a level where it's like, yeah, everybody has opinions about our relationship or a relationship and you just want it to be yours and you just want to get away with your lover and hide and be alone. And like, all of a sudden, most of the human population can relate to that, because, you know, you've always got people giving their opinion, or asking, when is this going to happen? Why hasn't this happened yet? What is, what are your next steps? What do you plan for in your life? And you're just like, please stop talking to me. Um, and so, I just, like, that is so admirable, because you can relate to Taylor, you can relate to yourself, and it's just, it's relatable. She take she takes, like, paparazzi chasing her, and her alleged boyfriend, but then she puts it on a level where you can relate, which is absolutely crazy. So, yeah, I love this song. Okay, uh, <laughs> track 13 is clean, and yeah, I cried during this one. Oh my gosh, um, god, this song. It's, first of all, it sounded great. The production actually sounded a little bit grittier than I expected, and, um, I thought it was fitting, honestly, because... I don't know, it's just as you grow up, things are more complicated and whatever, and it just, I don't know, to me, that's how it spoke to me, um, but wow, this song, just, the bridge is genius, the 10 months over, I must admit, just because you're clean don't mean you don't miss it, 10 months older, I won't give in, now that I'm clean, I'm never gonna risk it, the fact that she misses it, but she's like, but it's not worth going back to, and that could be anything that could be a person that could be a situation that could be a state of mind that could be a state of living that could be anything and we all have those things you know I I look back to just you know like I said my teenage years were um they were fine okay guys they were fine but internally I was just like you know you're going through puberty you're figuring out who you are you're figuring out who you want to be you're not quite sure if you're making the right decisions and then all of a sudden people have opinions and you're like ah like I hate it um and so I had like an okay like teen years but I do remember parts of my teen years being like very um I don't know just difficult and hard to deal with and so to me, it's like, I mean, there were patterns of living and behavior and stuff that I got into, and I was like, you know, it took work to get out of it, and, you know, there's still some flaws that I have that I'm sure, you know, I, I am working on, but I'm sure one day I'll I'll be clean of them, and then I'll be like, well, but it was really easy just to, like, do that, but it's like, we don't do that anymore. That's not something that we're doing because we are an improved person, but there are, you know, things that I sometimes I'm tempted to go back to because maybe I was experiencing a success in one area when I did that but it wasn't healthy it wasn't 
you know, a good behavior, but maybe I felt better about myself when I did it. I don't know, you know? And so, yeah, this song is just like so many layers, both lyrically, production wise, amazing, and really just kind of like, I mean, it's track 13, so that's another layer of meaning. It's just uh, the album closer, even though we have, you know, how many more songs do we have? Um, a lot more songs, but it's it's very unique and it's it's a really good song and it's just I don't know it's different from a lot of Taylor songs and it's just a really good one all right track 14 Wonderland oh it's so pretty it's so fun oh my gosh this song is so flirty and dangerous and wild and crazy and desperate and just I'm just uh, oh my gosh this song is just I don't know what to think about this song besides the fact that I love it. I just am like, like every time I listen to it, I pick up something new or I feel like depending on what mood I'm in, it comes off like this. It's like almost iridescent in the way that it just reflects all these different colors. It's crazy. And her vocals, when she says mines, like, like she said it differently and that was fun. And again with the squeaky voice, I really, really like the squeaky voice, like the little like, I don't know, squeaky voices, I don't know what to say, like, little thing, and at the end, I'm gonna stop trying to, like, you know, make it make sense, um, but yeah, and the party on the chorus, the beat, and the a, 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 it's so fun, I, (laughs) I just really, really like the song, and it's just kind of, like, it's very unhinged, and in the best way absolutely possible, so, yeah, super fun. All right, track 15, You Are In Love. Oh gosh, this brings back so many memories um, because of Swiftmas, that Swiftmas video. If you know, you know. If you know me, you know that that is just, that video is one of my favorite things. I love that video, and then it has You Are In Love in it. But just the song by itself without Swiftness attached to it, beautiful song, beautiful, beautiful, love that song. Um, the You could see it with the lights out, the way, it's just a, a weird type of stillness, like not weird, that's not the right word, um, but like a very, what is it, very effective use of stillness, and the way she says it is just like, oh my gosh, um, I feel like this one was a lot more, like, had a lot more emotion in it than the original, and I don't know if it was just, like, her life at that point or whatever, but I really just, like, it hit me differently, and it, like, so beautiful. I can't wait to experience that one day. I really can't, like, ugh, yeah, (laughs) it's just so pretty. Okay, track 16, New Romantics. Love this song. Oh my gosh. I just really like how fun and playful it is. It's just, it's so party and also so tragic and, you know, terrible and cruel and everything. Everything is so pretty in the song. The one thing that I will say that is not my favorite is the background vocals, the ah, ah, ah part sound different and they sound farther away and I don't know if it's just a setting I know Spotify has different settings um and I'm not sure if I have a setting on that maybe makes the EQ sound like different or something but um they sounded very far away and I was really kind of taken aback by that I don't really know why they sound like that um I mean I guess that's the way they did it and that's fine but I feel like they really kind of hit you differently in maybe a better way in the original to be honest uh but besides that I really do love the song like I, I feel like everything sounds I guess everything sounds a lot more like clear crisp whatever and then the background vocals that part that starts off the chorus just is a little underwhelming. I don't know. It it kind of sounds like maybe they didn't like layer it very well. It sounds a little like little kid-ish. So that's a little strange to me, but um, I don't know. Maybe it's just a setting on my Spotify. Uh, but let me know if you thought that at all. Um, but besides that, love the song. I really like the bridge and I feel like that da, 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 that part in the um like the actual vocals and stuff uh sounds like it's pulled forward more which is one of my favorite parts of the song so very happy about that 
Okay, we have arrived to the first vault track, and this one is called Slut, and it's so much different. <laughs> it's so different than what I expected and than what anybody who came on my podcast to talk about Taylor Swift expected. Oh my gosh, this is so pretty and so vulnerable, and like, she's really making the most of her circumstances. I mean, all the lines hit me. The opening really took me by surprise, and then it stayed the whole song. I was like, oh, it's going to pick up, it's going to be party, whatever. No, it never got to party, which is totally fine, but, you know, still. Um, some of my favorite lines, clink, clink, being this young is art. Love that. And if I misquote the line, I'm sorry, I was typing really fast. Um, and then, love to think you'd never forget. It's almost like, but I know you will, but, like, I'd like to think you wouldn't. And then, I'll pay the price you won't. And then it might be worth it for once. In a world of boys, he's a gentleman. Oh my gosh. This song is so pretty and so like, they're going to say what they want about me. So like, I might as well be junk in love. You know, I might as well be able, like, honestly, this is really, really telling for the 1989 era. I'm just like, I like this guy. Or I like this, yeah, I like this guy. And he... Like, I I tried to swore off dating. I've tried to, like, not fall in love. I've tried to, like, whatever. But, and if people are going to think, like, especially the rumors with, like, Red and, you know, her just, like, getting this reputation as a serial dater and all that. Um, with all the, all those rumors and all those, like, speculations and whatever, her just being like, okay, they're just gonna, they're call, gonna call me a slut, they're gonna think that I'm just, like, with every guy, and blah, 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 I'm just, like, using everybody, so they're gonna do that to me anyway, so I might as well really actually just be in love, and have that happen, and then it kind of is really sad, she never released that song, and then in the 1989 era, she just, like, swore off dating, you know, and so this kind of tells me she was like, well, I'm willing to, like, face the consequences they're gonna say what they want about me I might as well be able to just be in love you know this is mind-boggling to me because I think we all thought it was gonna be a blank space type of song that it was just gonna be like tongue-in-cheek just you know a clap back at the press and like it kind of was it was a quiet you know kind of you know a rebuke of the press but it wasn't like blank space at all this is absolutely mind-boggling And I don't know that I have much else to say right now, but I'm sure I'll have more thoughts later. Like, this is that. Okay. We're going to listen to more vault songs because what in the world? Okay. Track 18 is Say Don't Go. (laughs) What in the world is this song? The deep vocals to begin with. The lyrics, this is like, okay, this is a 1989 version of You're Losing Me. This is also um, the reverse, all you had to do was stay, in my mind. Um, Shot in the darkest dark, I'm on a tightrope alone. This is a more vulnerable, all you had to do was stay, but it's a reverse one. Why do you have to lead me on? Why did you whisper in the dark just to leave me in the night? Tell her all she had to do was stay, dude come on, um, how she said, I'm yours, but you're not mine, I'm trying to see the cars that you won't show, and then the part where she said, I said I love you, and you don't say it back, this hurts, this hurts so much, and I will be singing it in the car on the way to work, again, I will just be, like, screaming the song, oh my gosh, this is, okay, I don't want to say, like, all the really sad ones are relatable, but, like, for a while when I was younger, I would give, like, so much energy, so much, like, effort to people who, like, did not deserve it at all, and I've gotten so much better at doing that, but I sometimes still get into habits where I just want to give someone my all, because I'm like, okay, if I give them everything, um, if I'm so supportive, if I'm always there, if I'm always responsive, if I'm always praising them, if I'm doing nice things for people all the time, they're gonna like me. And let me tell you, that's always the case. That is not always the case. Um, Of course, be a decent person. But, you know. And so I really had to pull back one day. Because I was like, I'm exhausted. I am exhausted with the way I have been going about things. I am just like, gosh, I just feel so worthless. 
so like thrown away, so deceived, so just taken from. And so I really worked on myself to like have some boundaries actually. And this just sounds like what I used to think all the time. Just like, I said I love you. And it's not even in a romantic sense. Just like, how do you not know that I want to be your friend and you are just not putting in effort, you know? Like I'm seriously just like emptying my calendar, you know, canceling my plans just in case you call, you know, all of that. And, like, not getting it reciprocated or not getting it even responded to. Like, so over it. But this just brings me right back to that. And that is why I'm just like, this song is crazy! Um, yeah. Gosh, this song. (laughs) This is absolutely terrifying that she had this all along and she never released it. Kind of glad she didn't because if I had this when I was younger, yeah, that would be a problem. Oh my gosh, y'all, track, (laughs) track 19, now that we don't talk, this is the one that I claimed when I saw the track list, because I'm like, this is gonna be my song, I know that, um, I mean, it's sad, but there are several people, like, actually, uh, several, lots of people that I don't talk to anymore, that I used to, like, be, like, really good friends with, or I were a constant in my life, even if I wasn't, like, really good friends, and it just feels weird, because I feel like there are phases in my life, and it's just, it's, it can be difficult, and so I was like, this is the one that's gonna get me. Oh my gosh, I love the opening right off the bat. I really thought that this was going to be very, um, like, melancholy and you know whatever nope it's not and I I love that it's not um yeah the more I gave the more you'd want me less what is that line and how is it so true I love that um it's like almost if you put in effort people are like oh well you're not interesting to me anymore I just like the chase like stop being so forthcoming with your feelings you know um and then I don't have a say of just like, well, you grew your hair, but like, I hate it. And I wish that you didn't, but I don't have a say because we don't talk. Now that we don't talk, I don't really, I'm not in your life anymore. And it sucks. Um, and then I called my mom. I love Andrea and get it off my chest. And like, this is for the best. I really love that. I love that her mom's in this song. That's, that's so cute. And then I cannot be your friend. Are we going to say it louder for the people in the back? okay, there's so many people, like, that's almost the most humiliating part, especially if it's a romantic type thing that didn't work out, whatever, um, even if it's, like, unrequited or whatever, that's almost the most embarrassing part about something is when you can't go back to the way it was, because then that just betrays the fact that you caught feelings, like, strong feelings for them, and it almost just exposes the fact that you really cared about them, because if you didn't really care that much, you could go back to being friends and it should be fine. Um, but I love that she's like, I cannot be your friend. Like, we cannot have anything to do with each other. Um, but I love that little, like, part, it, kind of the bridge where I don't have to pretend I like acid rock or um, hanging on yachts with important men with important thoughts. I thought that was so cute. <laughs> I really love this song. And this is definitely going to go on my singing in the car playlist tomorrow morning. I just, yeah love 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 this is probably my favorite so far from the vault all right track 20 suburban legends so we got right into it there was like no intro it's just like boom here we are off to the races um i love this song it's so cute um i love the line flush with a currency of cool or coolness i can't remember if she's just as cool or coolness um but that was a really that really stuck out to me i love I loved that. That was amazing. Um, And something about, like, you're so... It it wasn't cool, but, like, you're so... Oh, you're so magnetic, it's almost, like, obnoxious. (laughs) That's hilarious. And 1950s gymnasium, the fact that she's, like, talking about school and whatever. Um, We'll surprise everybody when we're together, and, you know, it'll work out and whatever. Um, When you hold me, it holds me together. Yeah. And then we were born to be national treasures. Like, so many great lines to this song, and, like honestly it's giving the line of like we were built to fall apart um and I mean that makes sense but you know like god this song is cool I like it and I like the little I keep calling them like shiny bits or like little like you know and bejeweled the little you know things (laughs) and this one has some which I like I mean if she could put that not in every song because not every song needs it but I do really enjoy when she puts it in songs that um need it 
because I like the little shiny parts to the production of this album. Uh, okay, we got one more um, vault song left. And then we're done with the album. I'm so sad. This has been so much fun. Okay, the last track, track 21, Is It Over Now? Oh my gosh, there is a lot to unpack. Uh, the muted vocals at the very beginning, the screams, that was oh, crazy. Um, yeah, I don't know. It, it's really crazy it sounds like out of the woods to be honest and um I I love the let's fast forward to 300 takeout coffees later because they tease that lyric and that was super fun and um you dream of my mouth before it called you a lying traitor like what that is really (laughs) that's like oh my gosh that's that's really crazy um I kind of like the lyric. I mean, I do like the lyric. I'm just trying to, like, analyze my thoughts because there's a lot. Um, At least I had the decency to keep my nights out of sight. Um, Only rumors about my hips and thighs and my whispered sighs. Oh, Lord, I think about jumping off of very tall somethings just as you coming running and say the one thing I've been wanting, but no. (laughs) And if she's got blue eyes, I will surmise that you'll probably date her. (laughs) I'm like, oh my gosh. And then she said, your new girl's my clone or something. Uh, yeah, she said something like, your girl's my clone. Um, I just, I mean, that's crazy. That song just, like, how, like, do I have to see you go for somebody exactly like me but not me? Like, come on. Um, <laughs> these vault songs. I'm so glad that I'm 24. I'm listening to these at age 24 and just being like, yep. Yep, 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 yep. And this is just so comforting and I love it. Wow. Wow, this album. How how do I have this complete new appreciation for this album? Like uh, she just poured everything into it and it, it's an amazing like oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I I don't have any more thoughts except for that it's absolutely fabulous. I love it. It's going to be the one thing that I play for the next, like, six months. You know? It's it's a crazy album. It's amazing. It sounds great. I love it. And, Taylor, you did such a good job. You're not listening to this, but you did a really good job. Um, so, yeah. Oh, my gosh. This is crazy. I am so excited. I am so tired. Um, I am going to log off now and go to bed. But if you liked this episode, if you liked my Taylor Swift project, if you liked my podcast at all, if you liked any part of this, um, please leave an album review. Please, um, album review. Huh? Please leave a review, podcast review, preferably. Um, either on Spotify or Apple Podcasts, share this episode, email me your thoughts at bonjoursaylovemi at gmail.com, um, if I have, I'm gonna have, like, Spotify, uh, question boxes and whatever, um, on Spotify, so answer those, and share it on social media, that would be really amazing, and please tag me so that I can see it and repost, and thank you, and all of that, but yes, oh my gosh, another Taylor re-record in the bag, it's all hers. She owns it. It's so exciting. So congratulations on that. And the album sounds amazing. So yeah, thank you all so much for listening and I will talk to you next time. Bye.